Today's podcast guest will be Ken from the YouTube channel Kettlebell Ken. Ken is truly an inspirational individual as he is currently reaching his 60 year old mile mark and has gone through numerous physical ups and downs throughout his entire life. Starting early into powerlifting and transitioning into ultra endurance activities like marathons and triathlons, and then needing to pivot his overall workouts due to chronic pain, you will enjoy hearing about his story. In addition to this, he also had open heart surgery recently, and we'll talk about his experiences building himself up from ground zero at the age of 60. We will talk about longevity in your workouts as you begin to age and give you a few great tools and mindset hacks to allow you to work out for the rest of your life. Please like this video as it greatly helps to improve the overall spread of the message of inclusive fitness. Without further ado, let's begin my discussion with Ken. All right, so... Ken, welcome to the Become All Strong podcast. Thank you so much for uh, taking some time to join me and talk about your experiences as a um, health practitioner um, throughout the years of your entire life. There's been a lot of changes up and down in your health. Oh, yeah. And as somebody who at least I would consider is a very, very fit individual for your age, especially with the individuals I typically see and work with, um, I think this will be a good conversation to get your perspectives on fitness and health and everything in between. So, um, yeah, let's roll with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, I think an important first, uh, point to start out is just by looking at kind of how your workouts have evolved or changed over the years. So, um, you know, what age did you start? exercising, working out, what did that lead into? Um, and kind of what is working out look like for you now? Well, well, it's kind of been, workouts have been like a lifelong passion for me. All right. I've always done something. It was basketball in high school and college. And then that led into um, powerlifting and martial arts in my 20s and 30s. And then my mid thirties, I started to go through a little midlife crisis. So I <laughs> got into the, I'll take note, the marathons and the, um, like Boston marathon, um, Ironman triathlons. That was about eight years of my life. And I learned through trial and error that maybe some of that should have been bucket list stuff. All right. Cause I developed a little sciatic nerve problem in the lower back. And, but in the end, you know, I learned that it's more than too much of one thing is no good. So balance is everything as you get older. So when I was going to a physical therapist, I was about 48, 50 years old. And she said, you should think about functional fitness. And I said, what's that? And she said, well, it's like kettlebells, TRX, stability ball, everything that improves your mobility and flexibility, you know, and it would help take that tension off my sciatic, which it did but it took two or three years to really accept that limitation and then embrace it and then just move on, you know? So that was, that was actually going to be my question. Um, so you mentioned you had your stint with like Ironman and um, all those like, you know, crazy extreme sports, right? Uh, how far removed were you from it or were you removed at all? before you actually went to the physical therapist? Were you still kind of doing stuff like this in tandem? I can't remember, you said 48 or 40? Yes, when I saw the therapist. Okay, so at that point, were you still in the process of doing all your all your stuff or was this like three years you're like basically doing nothing? I was in denial. What led you up to that point? All right, I was in denial. So 43, I started feeling the symptoms of the sciatic pain. You know, that's where that piriformis puts the pressure on the nerve. Sure. And it's almost debilitating because it runs down your legs, you know, you can't get out of the car, you know, it's just it's a chronic problem, you know, unless you address it. So yeah, I was 43 when it started, but I was 48 when I finally addressed the problem and began being proactive with the change. And that's how I got into the functional fitness and mobility, stretching and kettlebells. You know, I was about 49 to 50. Gotcha. So it was not like a tra one traumatic event. It was basically like probably years of just like, um, this sucks. Yeah, this right. sucks. And um, 
So talk to me about like uh, what you did to actually deal with it or try to deal with it. What were some like things that may have worked or given some temporary relief from um, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, immediately go towards like a heat pad or stretching or pills or lots of other like quick fixes, um, which I'm sure, you know, I still do to this day sometimes, you know, something hurts. It's like, okay, let me Google like how to fix this in one minute, right? Because um, you know, that's that's the world we live in. But what was your kind of trial and error when it came to like managing some of those pains and symptoms? Well, I tried to stay away from the meds. I uh, try to try to be a natural, holistic guy, and unless the pain was so severe, I think I only took a painkiller maybe twice, you know. But I tried to really, like I said, embrace the stretching and the mobility stuff. And for me, what helped me the most was the two-hand kettlebell swing, because it really helps um, open your hips up and give you that flexibility, that hip hinge movement, mm -hmm. and then the Turkish getup. It's more of an advanced exercise. But I love it Turkish get-ups. the entire body I love, when you're getting up off the I just floor. started doing those within the last year. Uh, at least every two weeks, I'll throw some in. They're, they're tough. Shoulder stability, core stability. Everything. Like total body awareness. You know, so I really embrace that exercise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, there's, there's so many exercises like that I think people um, don't realize and uh, – that can be beneficial. So I think this would be a good tie into uh, what I was curious about next and why um, I love kind of following you. Um, and I'm glad we met is just this idea of training for longevity versus training for, um, I wouldn't say performance, because I feel like longevity and performance can go hand in hand. Sometimes they don't, but a lot of people when they start working out, um, especially when they're younger, go in for lots of strength and they want to look good um what's your kind of opinion especially at this day and age and where you are right now on um training for longevity as in moving the most uh being able to move the most independently on your own pain-free on your own um versus just training to look good what are your kind of opinions at your current age and ability on those two things well i think Everybody wants to look good. You know, it's just a natural instinct. But there's a, you know, it's just, it becomes more like what's practical in your life once you get to a certain age. You know, for me, that was like 45 or 50. But looking good is nice, but you want to feel good and be mobile, mm -hmm. you know, because if you don't have mobility, you have nothing, you know, honestly. So for me, mobility and preserving strength has become important after 50. I'm 60 now. So it's been an evolution, so to speak, of learning trial and error, but, um, just salvaging what I have, basically. But looks are still important. Everybody wants to. Well, and I think, I think the thing I want to reiterate, too, it's like it, it's, never a, it's never an all-in towards one thing. Like, you can still... And actually, you know, I feel like you can almost get the same amount of looks if you um, practice um, certain types of longevity training, which we might get into some ideas um, at some point. But you can still be flexible and look good. Um, you can still be powerful and flexible and look good. So I think uh, sometimes people just don't want to take the foot off the gas pedal a little bit to add in a little bit of extra, let's say mobility work, for example. People don't want to take 10 minutes off of their bench press session to get a little bit more ability right. in their shoulders. Because they don't see the immediate value. Correct, right. correct. Um, versus looking at it really long term as like, you know, this may be able to, even though I'm not going to be able to bench as much right now, I may be able to bench more 10 years down the road and just the fact of benching 10 years down yes. the road, period. To be able to do it. Yep. Healthy. 100%. Yeah. 100%. I totally agree. And, you know, the looks thing is relative, you know, but uh, just feeling comfortable who you are, you know, and being comfortable with yourself and knowing your limitations and keeping your eye on the long-term goal, you know, is the most important thing. I think that's like a huge thing that um, just needs to be said, too, is this idea of, um, your ego in the gym. So um, did you get to a point where you, I mean, obviously you did with the 
the the back pain and stuff but i think so many times people see all these crazy things on social media and then immediately be like i can't do that i'm never gonna work out or um i don't move like that person and that's how i should move versus like being proactive of this is where i am right now and that's okay because it should never be about looking or doing or moving like somebody else get lost in that that concept or quote unquote dream is like they see somebody doing something really amazing and it's like oh i've got to i have to aspire to that goal right it's really you've got to work within your own goals and what works for you because that's all you really need to be focused on i mean you're not competing against the, the guy you just saw on YouTube bench 600 pounds. I mean, you've got to do what's good for you sure. and inspires you because you want to, I believe in short-term goals, long-term goals, but you got to keep yourself motivated And those short-term goals is generally what keeps people um, interested or motivated yeah. because they got to see change and improvements so they can move on gradually, incrementally. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the next part of this I wanted to talk about, and um, I think is a good segue into that. Uh, you had heart surgery fairly recently. It was this last summer. It was May. It's been ten months. So um, talk a little bit about um, how long it's been since your heart surgery. What kind of went into that, and what your recovery process looked like uh, to get you back up to par? Because um, I understand today, I believe you're not limited. Uh, at least your doctor hasn't limited you. Um, at least in, l persuaded yeah. you, and I'm sure yeah. he. Ten pounds the first month was uh, I'm, a lot I'm, to swallow. Yeah, yeah. Did it. So, what was the timeline of that um, heart surgery? Kind of what exactly was it, and what did the recovery process Got look it. like? Well, I was diagnosed about three years ago now, uh, just for routine physical. I was asymptomatic and went into the doctor, and she says you have a heart murmur. So I'm going to give you an echocardiogram scheduled with one. And that digital technology revealed that I had a, a bad mitral valve, you know, and it wasn't closing flush. It was like this. So the blood was spilling over that leakage. You know. The mitral valve is just um, one of the things in your heart that basically helps to stop backflow. It helps to, to keep the blood going where it's supposed to be, right. essentially. Right. So that... That overflow was causing a problem in the long term. And because my heart was so strong and healthy, I didn't detect any weakness or fatigue. And they were concerned, like, why aren't you feeling anything? I just don't. Well, your heart's like double pumping to clear that blood. Did you look at me? No. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I don't feel anything. So he says, we're going to have to address that. And he says, well, you're young and healthy, you know, you got to get that done. And it took me about a year and a half to really come to terms that, uh, I'm human, and this is something that I have to address. Otherwise, there is no long term. So I did it. It took me a year and a half to make the decision. Um, and it was genetic by default. Uh, both my grandfathers um, had the mitral valve prolapse that I had. And one was too afraid to get the surgery. He passed away at 76. The other one, was heart was too weak. He was 80. He still lived five more years, but he passed 85. But um, so neither one of them had the surgery. So I was a little apprehensive going into it. But um, the doctor was University of Iowa and uh, did a good job. And my recovery, I think uh, I was walking day one. And when they released me day five, um, I think I walked 600 yards. And by two weeks, I was doing a five minute plank. What were you doing before this? That would give them some perspective. So 600 yard walk, um, think about a football field that's uh, 100 yards. So right. basically a football field down and back. Um, that was right after the surgery. Um, what did your workouts look before this? I was pretty much normal workouts. Um, What's a normal workout? Normal workout I understand okay. a lot of the people I work with, a uh, normal workout for them is standing up to go to the uh, uh, fridge to get some food. So um, normal workout for, uh, for me. Yeah. Kettlebell Ken. It was, um, I use the kettlebells twice a week. So it maybe be like 200 swings with um, 70 or 80 pounds, two hand swings or a uh, hundred snatches with the 60 pound kettlebell, you know, with one hand. Um, swimming 
uh, half a mile, biking 20, 30 miles. Um, I run now, but only on the treadmill, half mile or a mile. But uh, just a variety of different disciplines to stay active, you know, but, you know, different endeavors. Yeah, yeah. So pretty high intensity, though, yeah. before high intensity stuff before your 70, 80 percent heart rate. And mm -hmm. max. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So that um, that's got to be quite a transition for you then from like needing to put on the and I'm sure after the surgery, you might not have even maybe you felt like you couldn't do it, but I'm sure like mentally you were like, I'm ready. Like I could go do it, but um, yeah, I'm sure that was a hard. Was stronger than the body. Yeah. I was like, I just wanted to get back into it. Mm -hmm. But uh, they says the doctor says you got to take it slow. You know it's fragile. You know they had to stitch that that valve ring in there. And uh, so yeah, the first month was a ten pound weight limit. Second month was twenty twenty five. By the third month, I think I was doing thirty five and forty. Fifth month was fifty sixty pounds, and I'd say after six seven months, I'm about ninety percent strength wise to where I was at. But uh, I, I feel good. I feel no residual effects, no pain. And they went in minimally invasive through the side. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to rip it open. That's good. That's good. And um, yeah, I could only imagine how I would feel in that situation. I actually, um, I didn't have back surgery, but I, I had some weird sciatica at one point in my life. So pain rating down my leg. And I went to the doctor for it and there was like a very, they took an x-ray of my back. And um, this brings a whole nother tangent of um, whether you should get x-ray or MRI if there's pain, because sometimes um, it'll show something that might not even be causing it at all, but that's what the blame is put on. So I think that's what happened at this point. I went to the doctor and there was a very tiny um, disc slippage, it's like spondylothesis. Uh, and I was in a back brace for like three months during the summer and I couldn't do anything but walk. Um, so, uh, you know, humbling. <laughs> yeah. And it really makes you appreciate the ability to like move and stuff. But I'm sure we probably had very similar experiences, um, how we felt physically right. before and So it's and starting after. over from that ground zero. You know, you really have to just understand where you're at and you have to look at every day as progress. And that's the best way to approach it. I mean, we can't get lost and like, oh, I used to be able to do this and I can't do it. But you just, to me, it just keeps me motivated by thinking about making progress every day. Well, like I, I, I think that would be a much better way for people to reframe it because I feel like, you know, depression and anxiety often comes from not having a sense of purpose. So even though it seems like it might suck right now, it, it does suck to be honest, but looking at it as like, there's a lot that I can learn from this and using that as kind of like a springboard of how am I going to work out in my current abilities? How am I going to make these changes? I think that makes it a little bit more fun and engaging versus like I'm unfit or I just had a right. knee you surgery. Can't, you can't let it depress you. you know. Yeah, but you can, I mean, and people do and, those are the people who don't don't live much longer past that, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. So we talked to, you mentioned genetics and I did want to talk about that. So you had this heart condition, which was, um, they, they said was genetically something that happened in your home. So, um, or in your family, I should say. And a lot of times people will use genetics as like a scapegoat for, I'm not doing anything or like this isn't, this is the reason I'm not getting results. Like, um, when you found out it was genetic, did that really do anything for you? Or were you like, eh, I accept it and I'm going to move on and do what I can? Because I think that's what trips up a lot of people. Yeah, I had to accept it, that it was, you know, because there was people in my family thinking, oh, maybe you overexercise. Mm. And it's like, it's like, no, the doctor said it's genetic. So I, to me, that was a relief knowing it was something that I didn't do to myself. But they said you were just born with this defect and it just became more pronounced over time as you got older. You know, but, uh, well, everything works out for the best. Yeah. And you learn a lot from that too. It's, yeah. um, that's it, what, it put life in perspective, honestly, because it just made me feel that, you know, like,
percent perfect. Yeah, and, uh, you gotta you gotta play the cards as much as well as you can for yourself because stuff like that. There's so much uncontrollable with our health right. that we can't do anything about. And that's 100% true. Like, um, you know, somebody may have a genetic predisposition to be an alcoholic. Um, so they might have a tougher time struggling, you know, with consuming just a little bit and not being able to tamp down. Um, some people might be hungrier than other people, which is something that is genetic. And a lot of people will look at that as, well, it's it sucks and that's life, so I'm just not going to do anything about it. But I, I think the the mindset of trying to flip like, okay, yes, it's tougher for me, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing because I'm going to learn a lot right. about managing health and wellness with what I can do versus maybe a professional athlete who genetically – always looks good, can eat whatever they want. Um, I sometimes think that those athletes are actually set up for failure long-term because they do a lot of things in their athletic life or when they're younger that they can get away with and then it catches up to them where I'll meet some older adult who's 80 and they're like, yeah, I did track and I benched this and I did that, um, but now I can barely get out of my chair. I'm like, right interesting how that happens and so i think sometimes genetics looks is often looked at as a bad thing of like i have bad genetics so i gain weight more than other people that might be true but also you learn a lot of tools on how to manage that and some people never get the opportunity to to learn how to manage themselves right so true so true i've met some ex NBA players, you know, because when you're tall and thin like me, structural integrity is important. You're getting shoved into all the yeah, AAU guys, stuff. Their knees, their Join backs, us, and if they don't make adjustments, you see a lot of them can hardly walk. You know, when they get 60, 70 years old. So, I mean, I think people just have to learn what works for them and try it. You know, and try to just, you know, your cup is. You got to keep it half empty because you got to want to learn more as you go go along in life. Mm -hmm. Totally. So um, we've kind of touched on this a little bit, but uh, when it comes to pain, um, when working out or just through life, how do you go about um, pain and management? A lot of the older adults I work with are always dealing with pain, and even for myself, I get nagging issues. Not as much as I used to because I've changed my uh, training a lot, but um, how do you go about pain and training? Pain management. Mm. Well, I mean, I how do you look at pain? Yeah, like what happened? Like you, you tweak, you tweak your back right. someday. Like and as you, when what's you're next? Older, those nagging little injuries or nuances happen. They just, it's just part of life as you get older. It just happens more frequently. So yeah, how you manage that pain is so key. Like I said, I don't, I stay away from the drugs for the most part. Um, for me, a good stretch is what really helps uh, rejuvenate my body. It keeps the ligaments and the tendons loose. Um, sometimes if it does persist, I'll do like a hot, cold therapy, mm -hmm. ice with heat. And I try to stimulate the blood flow to that area, you know, if it persists, you know. But it usually goes away after a day or two. So do you not move? Mm. I always try to move. I figure the longer I sit and it just seems like it, the pain doesn't go away unless I do some sort of movement. It could be a gentle doing a, you know, calf raises on the stairs, mm -hmm. um, just doing on the stationary wall, bike, stationary, like a, a stretch for the arm, but just little stuff to keep moving. You know, because you can't let it stagnate because I think that's when it just gets worse if you don't do anything about it. And th this is one of the biggest things that I always have to, to tell people, like, what's the what is the benefit of not moving? Maybe it feels slightly better right now, but also what's the potential downside of not moving it for a very long time or just right now and looking at it from that way of, you know, if you have pain in your knees and you're trying to squat, 
what is going to be the potential harm from not squatting or at least trying to squat within your means versus just not doing anything at all. It's basically this idea of the risks are far less than the uh, benefits. So like the benefits from exercising with a little bit of pain far outweighs the, 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 the doing nothing aspect, right. which um, I guess is right. kind of what I was getting at. I have a family. This is a, an uncle I've been working with for some time. You know, I worked with him a lot. Um, he's diabetic. He was in his mid-60s when I started working with him. We got him down about 60 pounds. And his mobility improved a lot. But then he got wrapped up into life when he got towards 70. I says, Dave, the older you get, it's going to be harder to move and recover. You know, your body just starts shutting down after 50, 60, 70 years old. And unless you're proactive with that change, it just becomes more difficult. So long story, in the end, you know, he gained some more weight. Now it's even, his mobility is really declined. You know, I'm still trying to work with him doing basic stuff right now just to get him moving because the older you get, it just, it's harder. Your body, body starts locking up. Atrophy, right? The muscle atrophy. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. So, a lot of times people um, who come and start working with me and they're like, you know, like, oh, I just don't move like I used to. Or um, my first instinct and question is usually like, when was the last time you moved or purposefully moved or, or right. thought about your movement? Purposely. And I think that's one of the things that people often don't realize is, you know, when you're younger, you don't have to be as intentional with these things because your body functions fine without them. And it's that neglect over time where, um, essentially for lack of a better term, you get to a point where it catches up to you. It's just incremental change. Yep. You know, if you don't address it, you just wake up one day and you, you can't get out of bed. Or yeah. You can't move your leg. It's just like investing, like if I invested a dollar every single day until I'm 65 into like an investment fund, it's millions of dollars. Exact opposite. If I spent a dollar every single day on complete garbage, I'm going to have zero money. I, I use parallels between um, money and right. our body a lot because I think people really get that. Um, I see those invest in your things. health. You know, and I yeah. use that same analogy with with some of my relatives, I'll say, I call it an app. Well, I define app as anatomical portfolio preservation. Mm. You know, you got to invest in your body. You know, you can have all the money in the world, but if you can't move and can't get out of bed, you know, there's nobody to take care of you. For so, sure. So I call it app. That's what I discuss with my relatives. Say that again one more time. App, it's like anatomical yeah. portfolio preservation. Mm. Preserving your body. Nice, yeah. Preser I like that. I dig that. I dig that. That's a good way to think about it. Good way to think about it. Very nice. Um, so when you're talking about um, optimizing um, performance for yourself um, at your current age, nutrition and just general recovery is like a, a thing that I think also people just put to the wayside. Oh, yeah, I know it's you know important, but what is like nutrition and recovery after your workouts look like in your life? I, I try to keep a balanced diet, all right? I don't overeat. Um, I have cut back on red meat as I've gotten older, just harder to digest, mm -hmm. so maybe once, twice a week. A lot of fish, chicken. Um, but after a workout, a hard workout, like the other day I did 50 Turkish get-ups, uh, 200 swings, and like 200 yes. push-ups. And anyways, long and short is after the workout, my body is just like so on fire, it's hard to digest solid food. So I usually have like a protein shake or something that's easy to assimilate mm -hmm. and just reward my body with protein and nutrients quickly. I love the idea of rewarding your body, as you just discussed. Um, a lot of people will look at like eating healthy as some sacrifice. And I've gotten to the point, you know, I, I eat fairly healthy for the most part, try to. Um, but just reframing the idea of using this uh, food as fuel for me 
using it as a reward for the body versus punishment. Like eating healthy isn't a punishment. I think the exact opposite. Right. And the you know? more you work out, it increases your metabolism. Mm -hmm. You burn more calories at rest, and that is the goal anyway. Exactly. That's totally separate uh, tangent. Side note, I love that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So looking at, um, especially when you get older, those, those, if we're thinking about different ways to recover so we don't have as many nagging injuries and we don't have as many like niggles or tweaks here and there, um, the, that nutrition is got to be key because yeah. um, you are what you take in honestly i mean you, some well, you've met them you know some of the younger guys at the gym and they talk about what they did over the weekend if they drank or if they ate a lot of food or what but it just negates the workout yeah and the older you get you don't have there's less margin of error you know when you're young and your metabolism is fast you know, almost nothing off, yeah right? kind of what i was talking about with intentionality you know, you can, you don't have to be as intentional about those things because um, it's honestly, it's just that kind of immediate, you know, the immediate gratification. Like, right. I don't need to be because I'm fine right now. Right. So why should I? Right. Um, and that, man, if I could like just change people's perspectives on the world and any type of optimization of their life and performance or health or everything, it's just expand your dang time horizon. Literally, like, Optimize how will this affect you know you got to have stuff like today i need to go to work because i need to pay for bills for my home that's important but um also too like am i doing something on the side of work so that in 70 years from now i'm not gonna hate the fact that i was doing this work today um just for an example but yeah just uh the the, the frame of reference of today's the only thing that matters kills everyone um you gotta have that mind long-term mindset yeah 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 and i i actually now kind of my mindset behind this is basing off all of how i do things with health um with this idea that with modern technology i expect unless a car accident or something happens that i will be able to live to a hundred that's kind of just like in the back of my mind, whether that's true or not, whatever, but I'm going to expect that. So I want to not live to be a crappy 100. Right. I could live to 100 and have a terrible quality of life, need um, live in a nursing home for my last few years of my life, but I'm going to try to do stuff um, to, to, to live to 100, but to still be fit and moving and healthy and at 100. I think maybe we both know this person at the Y that's 92, 93 yeah. female. And she's amazing. She is Impressive. not just flexible, but she's she's cut and she's just and happy. You know, she's happy, old and healthy. You know, it's the best combination. I should get her on a podcast. Yes. I don't even know if she could uh she would fully under understand kind of what's going on. She's in her own little world over there. But yeah, she's awesome. Quite and seating um and she just does what she can. Right. This ninety two year old she I go in there and she just doesn't even care. She's doing some machines, whatever the weight is for her. I've seen her going and doing exercise classes, classes and not even, back. yeah, and not even really do the classes, but still just go in and kind of move a little bit. Yeah. And it's like, she is a prime example of putting the blinders on saying, I'm going to do this for my health. And guess what? You'll be laughing because I'm 92 and I'm jacked. Exactly. Um, just an inspiration. I'm yeah. Just, I'm such a great her energy is contagious. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so we've discussed this a lot, but um, fitness is obviously a huge priority in your life. Um, how do you keep it a priority? Because I know a lot of our lives, they, they stuff gets taken to the wayside. We have family come in and right. people will call you obsessed and crazy. Like, how do you make it part of your life and easily part of your life? Well, that's true. You know, to some people that aren't into exercise, they think it's an obsession, you know, but as I try to tell them, it's not just about doing one thing. It's just being active. You know, you can go for a walk, you can play with the dog outside, you can swim. Grandkids, stretch, kids, go, grandkids go play. Kids it's around, perfect. That's the ball, best the exercise the ever. Park. Yeah. Um, get your kids into sports. Get your kids or grandkids into sports and you will be fit forever. Absolutely. Chasing them around. Yeah. You know? 
just little things like that. But to make it a priority, um, I just I find enjoyment in it. And um, but balance is key, you know, not too much of any one thing. So you say you find enjoyment in it, and that's where I want to kind of dig into. So you enjoy what you do, and I think a lot of people will start exercising doing stuff that they hate. Yeah, so and you that's find something that you like that's related to movement. And be fixated on just benching the gym or just you know, running or do find something you enjoy to do and embrace it, you know, 100%. Uh, and that's where when people are first starting out there, what exercise is best? Oh, I can tell you probably what is going to get you the best results. But what I want you to do is try everything. Exercise classes, go for a run, go for a walk, do weights, kettlebells whatever find something that you like mm -hmm. and that you can stick to for a really long period essentially the rest of your life and maybe over time you'll pivot a little bit i've pivoted a lot i've done this that and the other crossfit running i'll probably go back to some certain things i like keeping it fresh because yeah. in the back of my mind i know that um that's the only way i can sustain it for a it really long period of time fresh. when you you migrate from different disciplines yeah we'll be like you know, CrossFit for six months or, you know, kettlebells or, and then swimming or something, you know, just, you just, that diversity of workouts, you know, is integral, integral to preservation. Yeah. I think mentally too. Yeah, That's the biggest thing right. for me because I, I, people get killed with boredom and I'm, I usually say like, it should never be boring. Like, mm -hmm. There's always something new to learn. Like uh, one of my friends just talked about, she's not even into fitness. She knows I am and she always gives me a hard time. She's like, I'm so jealous. So like, it's so easy for you. I'm like, whatever, long story short. Um, she told me she was considering doing jujitsu this summer. Wow. And I was like, heck yeah, please do. Please do. Not just for me, but for you. I mean, that'd be great for yeah. personal defense, but um, little things like that where it's, it's part of just learning something and i think if you can find something where you're honestly kind of a new bet um don't really know what's going on yeah, that's a fun way your interest to really yeah yeah, yeah. maximize the game, yeah like know? walking on a treadmill i could teach anyone to do that in one minute turn the treadmill on um i can understand why that would get boring um so life is life is much more than walking yeah, or running on like, a treadmill like with the treadmill example it's like I love a treadmill. I walk a lot on a treadmill, but, but you I can do the inclines up and down. Mm -hmm. You could put on a weighted vest. Yep. You could carry a kettlebell or a dumbbell in one hand to work the asymmetrical loading. You can do a variety of things with one particular exercise just by spicing it up. Yep. Yep. Lots of different ways to variation. Um, online will give you a lot of whether it's good or bad. There's a lot of resources online of different ways to exercise, which is a whole nother um, side note. So. Um, so I have an idea of, I think, what your answer would be for this, but I'm curious. Um, at your current age, what would be one exercise you would do if you could only pick one for the rest of your life? Oh, wow. Um, I have three favorites, only because I feel like I derive the most benefits from that. But, uh, I mean... I just see walking as number one. I got to have mobility. So if that's one thing I can do forever is just to walk. And then uh, second, I would say. Just... I guess I could I could split that up a little bit. So it's hard because I do want you to just do one answer, which is where you're getting to. Um, we'll say one cardio activity, so heart health. And then we'll say one kind of um, strength slash mobility, like yeah. moving the best through a long range of motion you can. I feel activity. like I derive the most Yeah, benefit. so we'll say walking with cardio. And I actually would probably agree with that because um, we walk everywhere. Um, you can make walking a lot more tougher. You can variate it in a lot of different That's ways. That's why I just recently added the vest. Oh, That's yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, man, walking's great. You can also mindlessly do other stuff too. So from a, like a multitasking perspective, I love it because I can – talk to people on the phone. I can, right. um, listen to podcasts, like do all these different things where, um, you know, if you're on a rowing machine or, you know, swimming is a good example. Swimming is great, but you can only swim when you do it. And when people are talking about boredom, it's nice to have something, um, where you can do a little bit of other stuff. Yeah. 
I did come across a gentleman that did have his stereos on in his. I don't know how. Sure, you got the waterproof. The waterproof. Yeah. Earphones. I couldn't even like, hear. I, I don't know. even know. I just feel like it would get in your ears, yeah. though. I don't know. Okay, so cardio, walking. Cardio, I walking, dig that. Um, I I just feel stretching for me has helped me so much with the flexibility. Once, twice a day, five, ten minutes, not long, just enough. And then, uh, well, swimming rejuvenates me. If I feel like I worked out um, too hard or just a little too much one day, if I go in and swim, it just takes the tension out of my muscles. And then, uh, but for strength preservation, uh, the kettlebells, um, two hand swing, because I feel like I'm getting cardio. That was going to be my guess. Cardio. I'm I actually flexibility in my hips. Um, grip strength. Flexibility, grip strength. Right. Um, that's actually a good side note too. Um, I so my so two handed kettlebell swing. Um, well, I have alternating single arms. Yeah, yeah. It's asymmetrical loading for sure. Get a little bit of oblique work, coordination, hand eye coordination for sure. Lots of balance in that. Right. Um, I and maybe I'll change this, but I've just always thought either with a dumbbell or a barbell, a um, clean so like a clean from the ground basically you have the barbell on the ground you pick it up to your shoulders and then a um probably i was going to say a strict overhead press so like a clean so picking up something off the ground coming up to your shoulders and then pressing it overhead um of just like the amount of movement patterns in that there's a lot of stuff going on lots of muscles side independently Lots of muscles. That's where I almost go towards more of the, the dumbbell, I think, would be better. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of my... Because I like doing that, too. I'll mix it up with the dumbbells if I get bored with the kettlebells. Mm-hmm. It's a different weight distribution on it. But um, You can probably... You can do a little bit more, too. And I think they're, you know, just different intensities. But, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, interesting. that's kind of what... Maybe even, like, I could add... And this is just Squat adding. Squat thrusters are good too. I was gonna say. I was gonna say instead of doing it to the shoulder, I could make it into a squat variation. So doing a squat clean into a push press, maybe. So yeah. that's a little bit more power um, right. production. But okay. But just that creativity, it just invigorates the workouts because you're thinking, oh, I can do it differently. And it keeps you interested. Yep. You know? Yep. Got to keep it interesting. Sweet. So uh, the last thing that I wanted to discuss, um, and probably arguably one of the most important things, um, when you have, when I have an older adult um, who has never worked out ever, maybe they're 80, um, what is some advice that you would give to somebody in that category? Um, Maybe not even an 80 year old, but just anyone in general who's never gotten into fitness. Starting to feel old. Like yeah, no, I, I would even they say could be just anyone. They could, be, they could be my age. It, it's just mainly anyone who's not starting out and is overwhelmed. I say find what you feel comfortable with, you know, and then take baby steps. Don't get overwhelmed because you can't do it with a certain amount of weight. You know, just be comfortable with where you're starting at ground zero and just believe and the progress that you're going to make every day and you know write it down you don't do it every day but like every week write down where you're at you know two three four months from now you can see how you've progressed and that's your confidence builder because you can't get discouraged you gotta just know that you're making progress every day mm-hmm. and i think having a clear idea of what what why am i even starting this to begin with is crucial too um because people can get really fogged up in the you know see somebody like you on online and they're saying like, Oh, I'm, you know, I'm 50 or whatever, mid fifties, or maybe I'm younger than him and I don't move like him. So that's just useless. And I think people get down that rabbit hole of, I don't move like them. I'm not going to do a comparison and comparison is terrible in the fitness industry. Um, so I don't know. I would, Staying off social media, I think is huge with that. When you're first starting out, you can use it for like guides and references, but the second you start looking at somebody um, because they look better than you, that's when you got to just remind yourself, like, this isn't about them. This isn't about this me. This is about your own. This is about me. Own journey. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're all we're all on our own journey, and even the people who seem like they have it put together, um, I'm sure, like Ken or even myself, like, I still every single day go through times of like, just not really that 
motivated to work out right now. And it comes back to just, I know how I'll feel afterwards. Um, I know my goals of this is something fun that keeps me fit and makes me feel good. And also to try to improve my overall life um, span and just longevity is the goal. Yeah. 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 Longevity. Yeah. Yeah. Living um, not only a long life, but a, a high quality yes. long life. Making a contribution to the world around you. Yeah. To other people. And it, and that's, I think, another point. People, uh, it's a good, people often think of exercise as selfish, but I look at any type of health-related thing, uh, mental health-related thing, taking time to meditate or whatever it is to improve your emotional, mental, and physical health is all a way that you're investing in yourself so then you can invest in others. I know personally, you know, if I was 20, 30 years from now, if I didn't take care of myself, I probably would not feel as good, not feel as energetic, not be able to do different things like this as much as I want to, to hopefully help others. So I think being selfish enough to take care of your own health is crucial to help others too. So that's a good point. The more you able-bodied in your own body, the more you can help others. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So where can people find you? um, I am... I just got on Facebook six months ago, but I I have a YouTube channel called Kettlebell Ken. Um, some of the videos are extreme, some are instructional. Um, I did it more of a as a legacy um, goal about two years ago. So you can check it out on YouTube, Kettlebell Ken. And there's a lot of videos on shorts, and then some under the category of general videos. I'll link I'll link the uh, stuff down below so you guys can go check it out. But uh, yeah, anything kettlebell wise, he's your guy. I love kettlebells. I don't have quite as many as him. I, um, I appreciate the, them. The maces and the yeah, you should start them. doing some more videos on those too. I think people would appreciate more because those are not often used a lot. And I think right. some instructional videos on um, how to use those properly and safely because um, even mobility. just kettlebells. I, I think people just don't know how to use them. And if people did a little bit more, um, you can see how many great exercises okay, you can do such at the a gym. Carryover. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, awesome. awesome. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Logan. Appreciate it. A pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, please give it a like and comment down below your favorite part from it. And if you want to continue to improve your overall health and wellness and knowledge of the gym, regardless of your current ability, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you in the next one.